everyone welcome to a brand new video so this video is part of a new tutorial series or a fuller course dedicated specifically to natural language processing or NLP as you may already know it with Python now this tutorial or series of tutorials will cover many things it will cover what NLP is so this is an introduction video about NLP itself plus the theory and the pipeline behind it then we are going to further delve into these different steps and different parts of NLP, especially with Python, but we will be covering both the theory, the sort of math, the algorithms, plus the actual Python code within tutorials. So this is going to be a completely in-depth course or series of tutorials about NLP with Python, and I really encourage you to keep track with it and actually watch and really understand the videos and learn from it in order to be to become an NLP professional. So without further ado, let's get started. So you've probably heard of NLP, you probably know what it is, but let's just start. So what is NLP? So NLP stands for Natural Language Processing, as we already have said. It's a branch of AI or machine learning, and it's highly in demand. Now in AI, there are constantly different sort of names or word combinations that are floating around and they're getting a lot of popularity for example computer vision so when you hear computer vision you know that this is everything that has to deal with images recognizing images you know facial detection facial recognition and all the different parts that make computer vision what it is then when you hear nlp you sort of think oh text words and all these sorts of things so here we're processing natural language or human language so by natural language this is the language that we use to speak to each other now while we understand it very easily so when someone speaks to you in a language that you already, already know you directly know what's going on without having a second thought about it for computers, it's really not that easy, and this is where we come in as programmers, as AI developers, here to actually solve this problem. So this is what NLP really is. It helps the computer to actually understand words. So when I type words on the screen or I speak them, let's say, so here we're talking speech recognition, I'm just giving an example, the computer in this sense will be able to actually read these words and not see them only as in words and characters and bits, but actually understand them at a higher level with the meaning behind them and how these words relate to each other to form a sort of concept. So this is what we're trying to do here. This is what we're trying to do when we learn NLP. And this is why we want to learn it, even though this is a really hot technology for the future and it's not going anywhere, definitely. So like we said, NLP is a very hot topic. It's very popular in the industry. And here's the reason why. It has a lot of applications. It's found in so many different parts of business, of tech, and it just has so many really, really good applications that we find ourselves these days not able to live without. And that's why this is a field that is not dying anytime soon because of all these different applications. So what type of applications do we have? For example, we have information retrieval. So where would we be without Google search? Search engines themselves are a type of NLP. They enable us to find relevant documents to a certain search query that we type into a search bar, and then we get all these relevant documents. Now these search algorithms could definitely be way more primitive than they are today. So now we have very advanced algorithms, but it could just be something very primitive you know, keyword matching, but then this just kept evolving. We have so much AI in it. We have recommender systems and we have just so much into it that makes it so intelligent. And that's an integral part of our everyday lives. So you can imagine how important NLP really is. Targeted ads. Now, while ads aren't necessarily NLP, you could say, the algorithms behind targeted ads can technically use NLP. So these algorithms involve many things like user statistics, the pages you browse, the places you go on the internet. However, with these statistics, how does it find itself able to recommend newer web pages? So if you were browsing for a certain product and then you have this recommender system that gives you a targeted ad with a new product. And the way this works is basically it gets the keywords from the original product and it just matches things with something very similar. And there's a whole algorithm going on behind the scenes and it involves NLP. And then the words you type concerning any certain topic on the internet can give these a sort of 
recommender systems, maybe not even targeted ads for products, but in general for posts on Instagram or something like that, from the words from the previous posts that you like, they can just suggest newer posts that could definitely be around the same idea or topic or just of your interest depending on what you were interested in before. So that's how this kind of works. We also have machine translations such as Google Translate. So we cannot live without this. Google Translate has evolved tremendously over the years. So machine translation is a very important topic for your computer to be able to read text in a certain language and then generate it in another language while conveying the same meaning is something that's so normal to us these days, but it's actually a very, very advanced feat and it's really, really important. We have other things like speech recognition, like Siri, so when you speak, it's able to just decode these. So right now on YouTube, you can turn on the captions and you can find my voice translated into some words and you can see them on the screen and that's how you kind of keep up with what I'm saying. So that's another example of NLP. You have text summarization. So if you sort of input a whole document or a paper and you get out a paragraph with a summary, you know that there's a very good algorithm working in the background that takes these words and summarizes it for you. There's also sentiment analysis. We see this in reviews and in tweets and in all sorts of things where we can convey and be able to understand the user's feelings towards things. So necessarily a user doesn't have to necessarily, um, let's say rate a product over 10, so give it a numerical value. They could just write a comment saying, oh, this product was actually um, really inspiring for me and it really helped me with my everyday work. And these are just positive keywords and then this would be able to determine the sentiment behind it and say that this user was feeling good while using this product versus maybe bad words that insinuate that the user was feeling bad when using these products. So these are some examples of NLP. Now, let's just not get too much into it because NLP is really broad and there are way too many applications for it. And that's what sort of puts you on the good side, feeling that you have a lot of space and a lot of things to learn within this subfield of a larger field. So this is a subfield of AI, but it also has its own many subfields like you can see on this slide. So why do we need NLP? So I told you all the places that NLP exists. I told you what it is. So why should you as a developer or a programmer learn it or someone who's interested in AI? So there is a large need for NLP. Why is that? That is because on the internet these days we have immense amounts of unstructured data and it's unstructured flat text. So let's forget the other types of media that we have like images and videos. That's something for our friend computer vision. For now, for NLP, we have way too much text and it's all unstructured. What do I mean by unstructured? So we have these structured data that exists in databases. So we have, let's say your name, John Smith, your age 30, your occupation engineer, and this is all within a, let's say table like SQL or something like that. And it's all structured and this data is related to each other and it's all normalized and very pretty and easy for your machine to understand. And through that, with your machine very able to understand it, it's much easier to analyze that type of data. However, the text we see on the internet, such as your tweets, your blog posts, your everything you write, you're writing reviews, you're just writing so much. And there are documents and web pages full of text, and it's a bit harder to process this text and actually understand what's going on with all this text. So this is why we have NLP. Now, NLP also helps businesses grow. So it's not just a job for a tech company because you know now that most businesses are just going in the direction of AI. Now, this is why this is a job that's here to stay because everyone wants data science and data analysis. Now you're saying, but isn't that just about, you know, math and statistics? Well, sure, but it's really not just that because you need NLP for some good data analysis. So like I said, understanding what your user wants, what's, what the information they're using, what they're looking for, what products they're looking at, what information they're searching for, this is really important. When you understand your user, you're able to grow as a company because you, you're able to adapt to what this user needs and then just give them what they want. So this is really important and i just i can see that there are so many jobs that are going just to keep keep opening up with more requirements for nlp for that very reason because it's just a central part of pretty much any business these days 
So enough talking about NLP. So our course is concerning NLP with Python. So like I said, the course will span one of two things. So first, we're not well, not not first because it's going to be a combination of both. But we'll be going over both the theory, the math, the algorithm algorithms of NLP, as well as the code in Python, the NLTK library. So what is the NLTK library? It stands for Natural Language Toolkit. It is hands down the most popular NLP library, as well as Python being the most popular language for NLP. It's an open source library. It's very useful. It provides all the different um, NLP algorithms and features and type of functions that you would want, and it's all built in. And it just, it doesn't take away from the magic of creating an NLP application or an AI application, but it just makes your life so much easier. And that's what we're going to be using. So NLP pipeline. So what do I mean by an NLP pipeline? So NLP is actually a very complicated task. So if you heard me talk about all the different applications of NLP that we have, you know that these are not easy things to accomplish. So you will want to break NLP down into a series of steps. And this is something that's like a generic convention that people just go through when dealing with an NLP problem. So what we're going to do by this pipeline is we start with the data that we have. So a bunch of text, a bunch of tweets, a bunch of reviews, a bunch of documents, whatever the data is. And the end result is our desired output. So some analysis, some user feelings, anything. So what we're looking for with this NLP application, this is going to be the output, even though we just started with just a bunch of text or documents or whatever it is. And then this data, this text, it goes through a series of steps until it reaches that end result that we need. Now, while I do attempt to explain the NLP pipeline, you must know that this pipeline differs between different projects. So projects and applications differ. There are so many subfields of NLP that this pipeline is going to look a bit different in each and every one of these, but I tried as much as I can to make a sort of generic idea of the pipeline so we can understand the different steps. So let's get started. So basically the pipeline will go as follows. The main part, or let's say the first part, and this part's going to be common to pretty much any pipeline. There will never be a pipeline without this part. And that is acquiring or scraping the data. So before you can actually go ahead and do the NLP task, you're, you're gonna need data, either for training or just data for let's say an unsupervised learning task. So you need data. Where do you get this data? I mean, obviously you need it for this application. So you get it either from, let's say, a pre-made data set, or if you're at a company, you have maybe a data team and they collect reviews or they collect user data and then they give it to you as, a, as the programmer at the company. You can scrape from the internet, you can scrape from HTML tags, you can just get so much data, you can use databases, you can use APIs, you can use, for example, the Twitter API to just get all these different tweets. So it's important to be able to get the data. Then you're gonna to want to pre-process your data. This is also a pretty much common step from the pipeline in pretty much any NLP application that you're going to want to clean the data. So like we said, we got this data, but it's messy. It's just text and documents and words. But how does the computer understand them? You're going to want to clean them. You're going to want to remove the parts that are unnecessary, like the punctuation marks. So what, why do you care about punctuation marks? Maybe you do. Maybe you want to know the relations between words using punctuation. This is all up to you. This is why these are sort of optional or things that you can uh, modify or change depending on your needs for your application. You can remove stop words. So stop words are like unnecessary words like and, and, or, or different types of words like what, there, then. Like these are words that are just not very useful. Now you can define your own stop words. You can say, I just want to remove all the ands and ors or I want to remove all the ifs. So this is definitely just a choice, so obviously another choice. It's removing unnecessary words. You can perform tokenization when you're pre-processing your, pre your data. Here you're taking these large chunks of text and dividing them into, let's say, words, or you're dividing paragraphs into sentences, or the dividing documents into words, or documents into paragraphs into sentences. So again, this is a choice. We have stemming. Stemming is basically just cutting off parts of different words to be able to get the root part of a word. So if you have being and then you cut off the ing and then you get 
um, B or if you have flying and you cut the ing you have fly so it's something like that it's just basically cutting however it is prone to error we'll talk about those in detail in the coming video so this is just a sort of overview on what to expect from this series we have lemmatization which is another form similar to stemming but it also aims to return the word to its original form again not many details right now we'll, we'll get into it in the next video probably um, after you pre-process your data, so you got the data, you cleaned it, you made it nice and all clean, ready to be processed. You start by word document representations. So what does that mean? This means we have to take our, you know, normal just text words and make them into something numerical, something mathy. So vectors, so feature vectors, like feature extraction. If this is all foreign to you and you don't get it, then that's no problem because we're going to go into detail behind the theory of each one of these plus the tutorials later, so no worries. But this is basically where we take these words, we take them from normal text and transform them into something math that the computer can understand. And this mathematical part, these feature vectors, so each word will be turned into a math vector. This will be taken and put inside a machine learning algorithm that's probably going to train itself on this data, on these features, and then produce some results. And that's when we, have, we would have a classifier uh, trained model. And from that, we now have, like, let's say, an AI application. So this is basically how the pipeline will go. Hopefully this video gave you an overview on what to expect from this tutorial series. I really encourage you to stay tuned and watch it and watch every video and be able to learn more about NLP. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye.